In, in the 80s, 70s and 80s, they were just volume based. It was just like tube with some spacers and washers and, and things of that nature. All it was was just volume, and you just sucked up all the pressures from a volume can. So they were typically long and large diameter and everything else. When I came in and uh, actually I started, started doing a lot of experimenting, and in 93 came up with uh, the baffles that were jetted. Um, notched and stuff, uh, worked around the equipment that I had, which, it, which is easier to do than design something where you don't have equipment for it, can't build it anyway. So we build it around what equipment we have, and we took everything, well, typically um, a nine millimeter suppressor in that time period, uh, one company had an eight inch by inch and five eighths, and I came up with a seven inch by inch and a quarter and actually beat him up by about seven or eight dB. So uh, we learned that, you know, jetting the baffles and things uh, are typically the way to go and, and can increase your efficiency and uh, make them smaller and lighter and quieter. So um, we've been doing that during that time. Um, I came up with the helical, was one of my first ones we did. It's probably one of the quietest five, five, six cans I ever heard. Um, it was a little bit difficult to manufacture because I was doing some very strange things. It was a taper helical, uh, and it was a little bit difficult to build. And uh, it was seven inches by inch and a quarter, and I put it on an AR-15. And once I shot at it, I hear a twang, twang. I'm like, what's going on here? I've never heard this before. It was loud in my ear. And I'm like, what is going on here? And I finally realized that it was a spring in the buttstock that was drowning everything out. I, I didn't hear anything else come out of it. It was just amazing. And, uh, you know, I had to make that can of aluminum because of the difficulty of, to build it. But uh, I'll tell you what, I've never shot another 5.56 five, can as quiet as that. Yeah, but uh, so we went into other designs and stuff, and uh, we went into some jetted baffles, some uh, some M baffles, some K baffles, um, some Omega baffles. Uh, we the the stuff that's the most efficient right now that we're dealing with is uh, helical baffles, and uh, they seem to be working real well. I've got a um, about a six and a half inch by inch and an eighth, I believe it is, maybe inch and a quarter can for a 6.5 Creedmoor that one of the major manufacturers, we went out and demoed in front of about 30 of them. And the guy turned around and said, man, I could build a whole company just off this can. He couldn't believe how quiet it was. Yeah, it was amazing. Four baffles, that's all it was. You know, a lot of these guys are putting oh, 10, 12, 16 baffles in a suppressor. Um, I'm typically, on my five, five, six baffles, I'm running three, you know, with a front cap on there. And they're as good or better than what they're doing. Um, I've got a helical can for a uh, 240 uh, Bravo. And uh, it's four baffles, and you can stand right off the end of it, four feet off the end of it, and it's hearing safe, you know. It's just a beautiful can to work with. But, uh, yeah, that's the sort of things that we do here. Let's start back, uh, you know, World War II and things. Um, they had baffles, which were basically just flat washers with a hole in it. Um, they used mesh. Uh, that seemed to be, a, a, had a lot of cooling properties. Um, they used um, either leather or neoprene wipes uh, to dampen the sound uh, with your uh, uh, OSS pistol. You know, they had, they had porter barrels. They had... Uh, you know, uh, mesh and things in there to cool the sound off. But as you went along um, to do larger calibers, you had to have more volume to deal with it. So that was the uh, the problem with uh, the older style cans. Uh, you didn't have anything that was changing the direction of the uh, of the gases. So when I got involved in it, we first came up with the M baffle, and the F baffle had jetting on it, and. Uh, what it did, it controlled the gases, allowed it to collapse the hole, you know, bounce things around the side, and, and we were finding that uh, we could get a smaller suppressor with much better reduction on it. Um, so we did that for a while, then we came up with a K baffle. And so Jim Ryan came up with the, uh, with the jetting pattern that we used on the K baffles. 
and uh, we've been using that ever since. Every once in a while, we a 45 or something like that. We come up with a little modification or a smaller cam. We do a little bit more modification, but it's it's the basic design. So that came out of here. Um, we also came up with the uh, Omega Baffle. Uh, worked with Joe Godini on that with SWR. Um, Joe and I came up with different designs on there. Joe had some different jetting than, than what I came up with. And then later on, I, I took the jetting that, that Joe had, minimized it down a little bit more, seemed to be working a little bit better. But uh, we did that, and they came up with that. And then the helical uh, was probably the most efficient baffle of the whole stack. Um, in fact, we have some videos on our site that if you take a look, um, you'll hear as you're shooting downrange, you'll hear the bullet going downrange and cracking. But when you get the camera in front and aim towards the suppressor, you won't believe it. it the thing is, it's just amazing how, how quiet the thing is, you know. So those are the basic designs that we came up with. Um, there's, and I would say probably about 85% of the market is either taking some one of the design uh, and, and working with that, where they put a new notch into the hole or a jet or something like that. Uh, the basic design basically came out of here. Um, they are doing some uh, baffles that that look like, you know, a cone baffle with a, with a uh, shroud on it. But when you take a look at it and you're sexing it, it's, it's basically a washer and spacer, you know, modified. You know, instead of having a flat face, it has a cone face on it, but it's not much different than what they did in the 60s.